Shawnee County District Attorney's Office is winding down the year and we are checking in today with District Attorney Mike Kage, who's also gearing up for his next term in office. Welcome to you. Thank you, Melissa. You ran unopposed in this yes. year's election cycle. What did that mean to you? Well, it meant the time and the energy that would have been invested in a campaign was able to go right back into the office. And so for me, the work never stops, right? And, and this time I didn't have to take time away from the day-to-day -day of the office in order to go and, and run a campaign, which is what you need to do uh, when you have a contested election. So, when you start a new term, though, you always are looking to the future. So what are some initiatives or focus that you hope to have in the next four years? Yeah, I really want to get us to a place where uh, within the criminal justice system, we are viewing cases differently than we do today. And what I mean by that is the system that we have in place, it's it's been you know, operating for, for decades, right? Without any kind of nuance, without the kind of flexibility that we need uh, to address the issues that we're facing today. And so uh, it's a systems change. Uh, there are legislative changes that need to be pursued. Uh, but what that looks like for me is an expansion of our alternative court system. We have a veterans court, we have a drug court, um, I'd like to add a mental health court into that as well. And what I'm looking to do is when we have issues in the community, like we do, like every community in America right now with mental illness, substance abuse, homelessness, uh, sometimes these stack on top of each other, sometimes these intersect, and these individuals need supervision, structure, uh, resources, care, and direction. And if we can get them those things while they have a single case, the possibility of them not coming back is, is significantly greater, right? So we want to reduce crime. We want to keep them from reoffending and stop that revolving door that we've seen for too long. And those alternative courts are things that need legislative intervention in order to make them a reality? Well, uh, not those specifically, okay. but legislative intervention more along the lines of how sentences are dictated in felony cases. For example, uh, in 1993, the Kansas legislature adopted what we call the Kansas Sentencing Guidelines. And those have been in place since 1993. And they kind of prescribe whether or not someone is presumptive probation or whether they might go to prison. And that has some value, um, but when I say Kansas in, is in the minority in adopting that system, I believe 12 states in total in the country have a system like that. And I'd like to see more flexibility and more nuance brought to the table. One other initiative you've talked about is um, opening up to the community a little bit with a Citizens Academy. Yes. When do you hope to start that and what is the goal? Yes, yeah, so we're going to make that announcement uh, hopefully here by the end of the year, but I wanted to go ahead and touch on it today so people are aware. You know, TPD and the Sheriff's Office, they both have Citizens Academies and they have me come out and speak and they give me about an hour or whatever time I ask for. And it occurred to me over, you know, over the course of years doing that, that there may be an interest in people coming to our office to see what we do and what it looks like after the investigation's done. And uh, I've expressed that idea to some people and they were enthusiastic about it, did some research, and found that there were some DA's offices around the country that do this. So I'm contemplating a about a six week program uh, for about two hours a night, um, you know, once a week, uh, where people can come in and kind of get the overview of everything we do and have an opportunity to engage and kind of see what it looks like in a real case and ask those questions. I think people would be interested in that. You are starting your next term with a new Topeka police chief will be incoming. Yes. So what are your thoughts on the process and why is this something important to your office? I imagine you're going to go to a meet and greet tonight, maybe take part in a panel tomorrow interviewing them. I will be in a panel tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm that. Uh, so it's important not just for me, it's important for the community. Okay. The Topeka Police Department responds to uh, all sorts of calls within the, the city of Topeka, right? And anything that hits my desk at the felony level or above from the city of Topeka is going to be investigated by the Topeka Police Department. So the folks who respond to the scene, the folks who do the follow-up investigation, their leadership, the support they get from the top is very important. And so uh, it would be my hope that the, the police chief that we select uh, would be uh, someone who knows how to do that work, someone who's invested in this community, uh, someone who has the vision to take that department where it needs to be, and the uh, fortitude to see it through. Well, we will find out in the next yes. couple of weeks, I'm sure, who the next chief will be. We Mike Kage, our Shawnee County DA. We already know who is in that office. It yes. Is you. Thank <laughs> you so much. Appreciate the update. Thanks, Marissa. We're going to find out when that next.